Hi everyone, welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Chloe and I'm the coordinator for events at Connecting Up and TechSoup New Zealand. For those of you who haven't attended a webinar session with us before, Connecting Up is part of the Info Exchange Group in Australia and New Zealand. Info Exchange is a not-for-profit social enterprise that tackles the biggest social challenges through the smart and creative use of technology. Some of our core activities include providing software, computers and IT hardware at a fraction of the retail cost to the social sector, as well as facilitating our online uh, weekly learning program, which is what you guys are attending today. And this program uh, provides you with upskilling opportunities on topics around digital marketing, social media, fundraising, budgeting and report management, and also access to training on how to effectively use software that'll enhance your ability to do your job successfully. That includes training on software like Canva, Office 365 programs, Calxa, Adobe, Google Suite, and more. That's enough about us. I'm really delighted to welcome you today to How to Design for Change using Canva. And that's with Robin King from Canva, who you can see there on your screen. Robin leads Canva's social impact network, identifying partnerships and programs that bring the best of Canva to help solve global challenges in the most impactful way possible. Canva provides a huge suite of tools which enable NFPs to market and tell their story. And today we're going to receive an overview from Robin about the tools available and how you can sign up for Canva Pro for free. Now, before we begin, a quick bit of housekeeping. All lines are muted, so if you have any technical issues, please type them into your questions box in the webinar panel and I'll be able to get to it directly. Um, and if you have any questions throughout the session, uh, please also type this into your questions box um, and Robin will answer them throughout the session and at a Q&A that we'll have at the end of the session today as well. Please note that your questions will not appear to the entire group, just to me. Now, if you're on a Wi-Fi connection and have multiple programs open, this can sometimes affect the quality of your audio and video of the webinar. So if possible, please close all other programs to help you have the best experience possible. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording and a link to the slides will be sent to you as soon after the webinar ends as well today. Before we start, I'd also like to remind you there'll be a short survey at the end of the webinar, and we'd really appreciate your feedback um, at the end of the session today. So that's all from me. I'm going to disappear and I'm passing it over to Robin to get things started. I hope you all have a wonderful session today with Robin, um, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks. Thank you, Chloe, and hello, everyone. Um, it's great to be here today and to be able to spend the next hour with you talking about how you can use Canva to design for change. So I'm really excited to be here and to be meeting each and every one of you. And I think by virtue of being part of Connecting Up's network and hearing about uh, what they do, looking at the biggest social challenges and how they can help you, um, I guess, tackle these social challenges, uh, that means you're a change maker and that you've got your own goals that you're seeking to achieve. And by virtue of that, you're part of Canva's mission. So a lot of you might know about Canva and some of you probably have never heard of us before. So what is Canva? We're an online design platform and this is what our tool looks like. Um, this, uh, this is our homepage when you log in. So we're really trying to empower you to design anything. Um, and we're on a mission to empower the whole world to design. So how do we plan to democratize design? It's a pretty um, big bold goal we've got there. Uh, we've kind of broken down our mission into what this means and I guess um, how we can then get there. So we want to empower absolutely everyone around the world, be it um, mums and dads, small businesses, um, big enterprises, of course not for profits, to design absolutely anything they could think of with every ingredient that they might need in Canva, in every language and on every device. And to do this, we're going to need a pretty amazing team to get there. And I guess how this relates to all of you, um, when we say everyone, we want every nonprofit, every social impact organization, every social enterprise to be using Canva to design anything that you might need to do in your day-to-day -day job, um, be it impact reports, grants, funding pitches, t-shirts for your volunteers. We want you to, to be able to uh, get that done in Canva. 
with every ingredient. So um, we currently have um, millions of stock images in our library, but we know that we can really diversify this and ensure that we reflect all the work that you're doing, be it um, conservation issues to homelessness to indigenous issues. So we wanna really diversify our media library. We're currently in over a hundred languages, which is certainly not a commercial decision, but we wanna make sure that we are accessible. And that's the same decision, uh, same um, reason that um, we want to be on every device and that we know um, people use all sorts of devices all over the world. They need different modes of accessing Canva. Um, so we're working hard on our offline mode as well, especially for more remote areas where you don't always have a stable internet connection. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess, breaking it down, breaking down how that mission might relate to you. But um, before we go into the details of how nonprofits can design with Canva, I want you to just pause for a minute and I know we can't stick our hands up and tell each other what we're thinking, but just think in your head, what does design mean to you? So I'm now gonna talk to you about what design means at Canva, starting off by what it doesn't mean. So to us, uh, design is a lot more than making something look nice. It's also um, not about learning really complicated tools. And to us, it shouldn't be exclusive, um, which traditionally it has been. It's set in the realm of um, professionals who've done a lot of upskilling. It shouldn't be complicated either. To us, design is about communication. So what is your goal that um, you need to communicate more effectively? Have a think about that. And hopefully today we can give you some tools and tips to help you um, uh, to help you learn how to better communicate that goal. Sorry, before, I know that's going to start playing immediately. So um, I'm just going to show you a quick video which sums up um, Canva and how we, um, how we view design and the changing nature of design. Graphic design has changed. It's done from this to this, and it's still not easy. But these Aussies are here to fix design. Starting out in Mel's family living room, family garage, they never gave up on their mission to empower everyone to design. And so Canva was born. It made design simple and it took off big time. Every day, over 4 million designs are made by people unleashing their creativity from students with opinions to moms with a side hustle. Ooh, that's nice. To those crushing it at work. And the designers, they love us too, don't you? Sure, I use Canva. I mean, it's free. There are millions of premium photos and videos, over 70,000 professional templates to get you started, or you can make your own from scratch. It's so easy. Non-designers can do it. Non-designers? Like Margo. Well, Margo, you have to have a lot of time in your head. She doesn't. We believe in design for everyone, but don't take it from us. Take it from some of the 20 million people that use Canva every month. This is Mel, Cliff, and Cam, and this is Canva. Create a free account today at canva.com. So uh, that number's now gone up to 30 million people who are using us regularly, and we've had billions and billions of designs created all over the world, which is pretty cool for a business that started in a Perth um, garage about it's about 10 years, 10 years old now, but um, yeah, it's a home, homegrown Aussie success story, even though that video is pretty American. So um, at Canva, uh, we, we like to try and keep things pretty simple. Uh, so we have a two-step business plan. And the first uh, step is become the most valuable company in the world. And the second step is do the most good we can. And number two is really what I'm here, why I'm here today and why we offer our premium product for free to all of our nonprofits. And it's a big part of living out our values. Uh, we have six core values at Canva um, that really inform every decision that we make. Uh, these are set crazy big goals and make them happen, be a good human, empower others, pursue excellence, make complex things simple, and be a force for good. And as a business that um, is scaling and growing really rapidly, we have to make hundreds of decisions um, across the business every day. So it's a really good compass to be able to come back to our values um, when it, you're unsure of a decision and you need something to kind of, um, yeah, help you decide what to do really fast. So be a boss for good is um, the value that really informed why we joined Pledge 1%. 
and some of you may have heard about this movement, um, we have decided to pledge 1% of our profit, equity, time and product into making the world a better place. And as part of that, we've established the Canva Foundation, which is uh, pretty fresh. It's only been established for about two months now. And uh, our mission is to bring the best of Canva to help solve global challenges in the most impactful way possible. And this is where um, all of you come in. So as part of the foundation, we've got two key focus areas. The first one is um, how we can improve access to quality education for youth and poverty. And then the second focus area is how we can help nonprofits achieve their goals. And the reason we've decided to hone in on this um, area, and this of course is a generalization, but um, we have seen how many nonprofits lack the skills and the resources to communicate their ask and their impact effectively. And this could be from uh, storytelling to design, writing, marketing, social media, and really bringing this all together into an effective communication campaign. But uh, all hope is not lost, and we see this as a massive opportunity, because we believe that if we can um, empower all of you to improve your, your communication and your marketing, um, so that you're explaining your impact better, um, this will help you attract more supporters and partners, it'll help you scale faster, and hopefully do a lot more good. Um, and we really do think that Canva's tool is a perfect fit for all of this. this Sorry. Um, and what I'm about to show you next is uh, an excerpt from a TED, TED Talk um, by Dan Pallotta. If you haven't watched it, I'd highly recommend going and finding it. It's called The Way We Think About Charity is Dead Wrong. It's had um, over 5 million views. And I'm just about to show you an excerpt which really touches on this um, kind of problem we've identified. Um, he talks about the double standards between the for-profit and the not-for-profit industry and how traditionally we just haven't um, thought it was an important thing, marketing and advertising for non-profits, but how we really need to change that and help non-profits communicate more effectively. So take a look. The second area of discrimination is advertising and marketing. So we tell the for-profit sector, spend, spend, spend on advertising until the last dollar no longer produces a penny of value but we don't like to see our donations spent on advertising and charity. Our attitude is, well, look, if you can get the advertising donated, you know, at four o'clock in the morning, I'm, I'm okay with that. But I don't want my donations spent on advertising. I want it to go to the needy. As if the money invested in advertising could not bring in dramatically greater sums of money to serve the needy. In the 1990s, my company created the long distance AIDS ride bicycle journeys and uh, 60 mile long breast cancer three-day walks and over the course of nine years we had 182,000 ordinary heroes participate and they raised a total of 581 million dollars they raised they raised more money more quickly for these causes than any events in history all based on the idea that People are weary of being asked to do the least they can possibly do. People are yearning to measure the full distance of their potential on behalf of the causes that they care about deeply. But they have to be asked. We got that many people to participate by buying full page ads in the New York Times and the Boston Globe and primetime radio and TV advertising. Do you know how many people we would have gotten if we put up flyers in the laundromat? Charitable giving has remained stuck in the U.S. at 2% of GDP ever since we started measuring it in the 1970s. That's an important fact because it tells us that in 40 years, the nonprofit sector has not been able to wrestle any market share away from the for-profit sector. And if you think about it, how could one sector possibly take market share away from another sector if it isn't really allowed to market? And if we tell the consumer brands, you may advertise all the benefits of your product, but we tell charities, you cannot advertise all the good that you do, where do we think the consumer dollars are going to flow? The second area of discrimination is advertising. Okay, so I think that really encapsulates um, a problem that we need to get better at marketing as nonprofits. And hopefully today uh, we can really uh, talk you through how Canva can help you better communicate all the good that you're doing. And just to give you an example of, um, I guess, some work we're starting to do in this space with the nonprofit sector, I wanted to talk you through a trip that we had to Nigeria this year. And I don't know how many of you would um, 
be across, I guess, n n the facts about Nigeria, but it's got the biggest population in Africa, the youngest population, is, it's got an average age of 17, and one of the fastest growing populations in the world. And um, yeah, with that comes a lot of social issues, um, and the government is really uh, struggling to serve all the needs of its country. So, so young social innovators are really having to step up and um, take matters into their own hands and develop solutions with scale in mind to address a lot of um, really pressing social issues in their country. And we partnered with an organization called Leap Africa and who had identified that they've got these amazing thinkers and innovators in their country who are coming up with great ideas, but they're pretty bad at um, selling these ideas, communicating them, raising fund, um, and with that comes raising funding. So they asked us how we could help um, because they just be they believe that these uh, innovators could could have a way bigger impact than they're currently having by um, by improving their communications. So we went over there, a small group of us, and ran some workshops on branding, storytelling, presentations, and marketing. And this is just a quick video to show you um, how this uh, helped these innovators and these uh, people working on um, really pressing social issues change the way they thought about branding um, and I guess yeah what, what um, sorry um, what Canva can do what Canva um, could be used for to help them communicate their brand more effectively and amplify their impact. <laughs> Leap is a non-profit organization which has established to really inspire, empower, and equip a new generation of African leaders. I stand about that we make shoes from plastic waste. I'm going to tell you, um, slum to children, how to paint. Uncle Paddy is a digital cancer clinic that is helping empower people who are concerned about cancer. The purpose of the boot camp is really to inspire them, encourage them, but also put them with very, very practical skills that they could utilize to not only refine their business models, but also to scale their interventions. I have a whole beer for social media, which I have been able to learn today how best to tell my story to people to be able to connect with them, to convince them. One of the things makes best was your personal brand is a comic. Brand. It's not just your color and your logo, it's like what you lead people with. And it starts with purpose. I mean, I have never thought about brands like that. It's, it's been amazing. I learned how to tell a story, and especially to our customers and even our investors really buy into our dream. I believe this is going to be really impactful. It will help us with more people, create more impact, you know. And therefore, I believe and the Canva thing to be part of us. Yes. <laughs> so I'm sure we've got um, a bunch of you in the audience who also may have a, a phobia of social media or who um, I guess are struggling to um, I guess define your brand at the moment. So uh, we're going to go through some really practical steps now on how you can use Canva to design the change. Um, and we've got three, uh, three key steps we're going to go through. First is obviously sign up and get the Canva tool and meet the nonprofit community already using Canva. So uh, some of you, I think, have already asked these questions. Is Canva really free? Um, we have our um, base model is free, so anyone can sign up anywhere and get this for free. But then we do offer our premium paid product, which is called Canva Pro, for free to nonprofits, but also to education um, now. So it's free for all students and teachers. And I'm telling you about the education product just because a lot of um, you are probably working in the education sector, and a lot of you are probably parents. Um, so yes, uh, it's a great tool that um, encourages critical digital literacy and kind of project-based learning. And we're seeing great uptake. Um, it's pretty new. It was only launched uh, towards the end of last year, but um, the New South Wales Department of Education is working to push this out to all of their teachers. And yeah, we've had, um, it's growing really, really quickly. Um, 
that's a short video. I won't go into it now though, but you can watch that in your own time. But it's just showing um, how Canva can improve your classroom experience. And then Canva for nonprofits. So it's currently free for all registered nonprofits. And um, we've got our eligibility guidelines set out on um, our support center page, which I'll show you next. And we're also um, looking at expanding this to all social impact organizations. That might be, even if you are making a revenue, if you're reinvesting the majority of your revenue back into your business uh, to achieve your social mission, then we want to give you um, our premium product for free. So uh, if you haven't already got your free um, not-for-profit account, uh, you have to sign up and get just a Canva, um, get a login first, and then you go to support.canva.com and you can apply for the non-profit program. You just have to fill out a few questions and attach some um, documentation. And that usually gets approved in about, you know, absolute max two weeks, but um, it should be a lot quicker than that. So what does this give you when you sign up as a um, non-profit to our pro to our pro program? Well, it's all of our premium features for free. And this is currently for up to 10 people in your organization. So I think a lot of people don't know about that, but you can invite um, team members for free as well. So what are these premium features? Well, um, this is our um, page explaining, kind of grouping them. So you get a lot more content, which is Photos Pro, Templates Pro and Text Pro. You can really kind of organize your content, um, which kind of means you can do things on the run and create far faster. Um, that's our Canva, um, our Brand Kit Pro, which I'll take you through in more detail shortly. Folders and storage. And then it's also just really simple to create. So a more seamless creation experience. Um, and um, exporting high quality marketing materials. So Publish Pro, Animations Pro and Magic Resize, which is one of our most loved features where you can design once and then you resize that design into a bunch of different, um, different uh, templates or um, endpoints that you want. Um, and this is just a quick video to show you, um, to talk about the Pro product and um, I guess how you can leverage these premium features. Okay, so when you sign up um, to Canva Pro or not profit, not for profit, whatever you want to call it, you're joining a community of over 55,000 like-minded nonprofits, and we're seeing this grow really fast as well. So, um, how do you meet others in the community? You can sign up to our Canva Nonprofits Facebook group, and we um, do a bunch of really fun, simple posts in here. Um, which might be graphic design basics or talking about an upcoming kind of big event um, and just lots of tips and tricks. And it's great as well to be able to see the questions that others in the community are asking and then um, what our community team are responding with. Because I'm sure one person has the question, it means it's on the minds of lots of our users. So I'd highly encourage you to join that as well. Uh, so second, um, I think it's really clear to, it's really important to clearly define your goals. Canva is a really fun tool and I can, you can totally get lost in it. So I think, um, think about what your goal is before you log into Canva, um, especially if you're short on time, which I know um, so many people in the not-for-profit world are and are kind of trying to do five people's jobs at once. So um, yeah, it's really fun. Go and explore Canva definitely, but also I guess um, have a good think about why you, how it could be useful for you, I guess. Um, is it branding that you're really wanting to um, push? Are you wanting to do lots of marketing for an upcoming event or um, whatever you have on? 
Uh, are you needing to pitch? Are you needing to go and pitch to um, potential funders? Or are you wanting to tell your stories, tell your stories of impact to all your supporters? So, or it might be something entirely different, but have a good think about what it is. And once you're clear on that, um, there are so many ways that, um, and different tools and um, bits of education that we have in Canva to help you refine your skills to achieve these goals. Because we really know, um, as you've kind of seen, the thread throughout this presentation is we're here to empower everyone. Whether you've never seen this tool and you have never don't have a creative bone in your body, to the pros who really want to kind of refine and um, tweak and I guess just really polish everything that they've got. So we're here to serve everyone along that spectrum. Um, and a really good starting point if you don't know anything or even if you do and you want to um, deepen your skills is our design school. So it's a place where um, we have a bunch of short courses. I'll just show you what it looks like. So um, yeah, it's got some little uh, crash courses on social media, graphic design, branding your, branding your business um, presentations, and then a bunch of um, tutorials, which are really good with some practical exercises to get you started. And I'll just click on here. This is our branding. Um, Hi, I'm Kat. Welcome to Canva Design School. Sorry. Um, as you can see, these are little like, they're super short, so bite size, like a few minutes each, um, explaining and breaking down, um, I guess, branding into a bunch, 12 different courses there. So yeah, dive in and take a look at that. It's really helpful to get started. So what do we mean by branding? Uh, what is a brand? I think for me it is a connected set of behaviours. So it's how I speak, it's how I communicate with others, it's how I promote myself, it's how I react. When something goes wrong, what do I do to fix it? When you have a problem, how am I there? Um, and in that sense, you know, a brand is a very human thing very amorphous and more and more it needs to move into very different places of our life so it might be how you talk to something like an Alexa or the way that a text is worded from your phone company or an advert you see on the street all of those things so uh, when we think about brand we think about it as a promise to our users to all of you um, and I guess as a not-for-profit, you may not have customers as such, but it's a promise to your beneficiaries. It's a promise to your funders. It's a promise to your volunteers. So what is that? I think um, traditionally, we've always thought about brand as, you know, a logo, as your colors, as the um, imagery that you use to present your brand and as the copy and text that you use. And that is a massive part of your brand, definitely, but I think it really starts with that promise that will then inform all of this. So this is where um, Canva's uh, pro, the Pro Brand Kit um, really is a useful tool to use and it allows you to upload your logos to save your brand colors so and your brand fonts, and then you can automatically apply these to any design that you're designing, which is really, really um, a great time saver and just allows you to bring um, a great kind of uniformity to a lot of your um, designs and the way that you market your course. So um, some of you may have amazing logos and be super clear on um, you know, the colors that you use and everything, but some of you may have nothing. <laughs> so um, don't worry, we have great tools to help you get started in Canva. And we're just gonna go through a few of those um, now. I'll just show you how they work, but uh, there are links here so you can go back and explore all of this in your own time because we don't won't have time to go through everything. But um, we have a logo maker, which is really fun. Um, so just go to our logo maker, click start designing a custom logo. And hopefully all of this is showing you just how easy it is and that um, anyone can do this. It's really not time consuming. So um, let's say I'm a conservation organization and I'm called Greening for Good. So I click this um, logo, I quite like the look of that. It's got leaves, greening for good. A little bit bigger maybe. Great, that looks quite nice. But now what I can do, 
let's search for green templates actually. Okay, nice. I can go through and I can see what this looks like. Eh, don't like that one as much. Yeah, that one's pretty good. You can go through and just apply um, a bunch of different um, logo templates and it'll automatically kind of convert that for you and you can get a sense for what you like before you select your final one. And you can also kind of tweak things, you can change stuff around. Um, so yeah, that's a great way to get started once if you don't have a current logo or you're wanting to change your logo. If you have no idea where to start with colors, we have a great color tool. Um, this is my favorite one, the color palette generator, where you can just um, upload a photo. So say you have a photo you took from a recent event or something that really um, represents your, um, your cause. Um, like I said, I'm a conservation organization, so I'm dealing with deforestation. I've got this image that we took recently, and this will um, give me a bunch of colors that um, really go nicely with that um, image that I can then use in my designs. And I can just copy those color codes across to Canva and um, apply those colors or add them to my brand um, toolkit. If you want some tips on um, imagery for your brand, we you can search for pretty much anything. Um, I'll search for forest in line with my brand in here. And then I get a bunch of free and premium images in here that I can use. Um, if you hover on the image, you can see there that it's free. Majority of uh, pr pretty much all the ones at the top will be free. It's only when you really dig deep that you may have to pay for some of them. Um, and then also if you're wanting to get started on fonts, um, we've got some great articles on um, our Learn blog, which teach you, um, I guess, how to teach you what fonts mean and the kind of um, emotions they can invoke, because yes, font can, emo can invoke emotion. Um, yeah, and different tips and tricks, I guess, on um, exploring font. And we've got some great um, font pairings within our editor as it is. So you can use what's there and then you can go and learn more, I guess. But um, I think all of that is, that's really nice to have, but it really does come back to this um, core thing about what is the purpose of your organization and how do you um, use these different tools in Canva, like fonts, logos, colors, to represent your purpose. And um, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this um, before, this short um, TED talk, but I'm from Simon Sinek, but it's on purpose and the why. So I'll just show you a quick excerpt from this. Why, how, what? This little idea explains why some organizations and some leaders are able to inspire where others aren't. Let me define the terms really quickly. Every single person, every single organization on the planet knows what they do 100%. Some know how they do it, whether you call it your differentiating value proposition or your proprietary process or your USP. But very, very few people or organizations know why they do what they do. And by why, I don't mean to make a profit. That's a result. It's always a result. By why, I mean what's your purpose? What's your cause? What's your belief? Why does your organization exist? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? And why should anyone care? Well, as a result, the way we think, the way we act, the way we communicate is from the outside in. It's obvious. We go from the clearest thing to the fuzziest thing. But the inspired leaders and the inspire or inspired organizations regardless of their size, regardless of their industry, all think, act, and communicate from the inside out. Let me give you an example. I use Apple because they're easy to understand and everybody gets it. If Apple were like everyone else, a marketing message from them might sound like this. We make great computers. They're beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. Want to buy one? Meh. Nah. And that's how most of us communicate. That's how most marketing is done. That's how most sales is done. And that's how most of us communicate interpersonally. We say what we do. We say how we're different or how we better. And we expect some sort of behavior, a purchase, a vote, something like that. Here's our new law firm. Uh, we have the best lawyers with the biggest clients. We have, you know, we always perform for our clients, do business with us. Here's our new car. It gets great gas mileage. It has, you know, leather seats. Buy our car. But it's uninspiring. Here's how Apple 
actually communicates. Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. The way we challenge the status quo is by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. We just happen to make great computers. Want to buy one? Totally different, right? You ready to buy a computer? Yeah, so I think that is um, really, it captures it really succinctly on why you have to go from the inside out and really think about inverting some of your communications potentially. So what is your cause? What do you believe in? Get super, super, super clear on that. And then the how comes and then the what. So looking at Tesla, they're, um, that they exist to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. Looking at Nike, they exist to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. And they just happen to make sports gear. Looking at Canva, we exist to empower the world to design. And we do that via an online tool. So you get the picture. Um, I think, yeah, that's really comes down to what branding is. And um, yeah, I just wanted to, I guess, um, reassure you in that if you haven't got it figured out, don't worry, neither did we. We only got going on <laughs> really defining our brand just over a year ago. And um, this is when we were already being used by millions of people around the world. And we realized we haven't got super, super clear on um, Canvas brand. So I'm just gonna show you um, this brand book and it's a bit outdated now, but um, this was what we, um, what we started off with. Like, what is our mission? What are our brand pillars? What are our cultural values? This is only in April, 2019. And um, we defined our brand pillars um, that, and then we kind of went through and did a, just a mapping process of um, what we wanted to be seen as, um, and then went what imagery um, matched that, I guess, um, what we aim to do through everything that we do, um, what our personality was, what our brand identity was, um, the kind of person that we were, we decided we were a creator um we looked at a bit bunch of different adverts or um phrases and things like that and um yeah i guess came up with what our voice was going to be so it was really just a kind of we are this we're not this um a methodical process of going through um going through that uh looking at i guess different values or attributes that we aligned with and really defining and refining um how we wanted the world to see us so um, there's no magic to it. It's something you just have to go through with your team, I guess. And from there, we've really built out um, a strong brand for Canva. Um, and I think a lot of uh, having a really clear brand then translates into all the other marketing and messaging and website building and every other kind of um, communication effort that you do. So it really is that starting point that um, you have to nail. And you can learn more, as I said, about branding your business on our design school course. And we do have a deeper, um, deeper dive into this where we really go through how you can define your personality, how you, um, I guess, map your values and um, sort of understand um, how to create a strong identity. And that's in our introduction to designing for change course. Um, so I'll, I'll share a bit more about how you can um, register for all of these other courses shortly. The next goal we um, wanted to touch on was marketing. So a smart marketing plan can give you a set of tools that can help you communicate your mission, fundraise, approach, approach partners, advocates, and volunteers. And what do we mean by a marketing plan? Well, first it's define your audience. Who are you speaking to? Um, and then what are the goals that you want to achieve with this audience? And then I think um, from there you segment your goals to your different campaigns. And you may have very limited budget or you may have a massive budget depending, um, probably often comes back to what those goals are. Um, it's important to really craft a message aligned to each of those campaigns and then create a tactical, tactical plan and measure if you're actually achieving what you're setting out to. And by tools, um, we're talking about any means that you use to um, communicate. So it might be social media assets, might be video content, it might be email newsletters, um, or it might be your website. So whatever those tools are seeing in your toolkit. Um, again, we probably, 
Um, I'll quickly show you this social media um, video, but there's a lot more depth that you can go into on the design school course. So where do you spend most of your screen time? Instagram, Twitter, maybe Tinder? We've all got our favourites. But your personal favourite isn't always the best platform to market your business on. To reach your customers online, you got to go where they go. Uh, personally, my, my favorite platform is Twitter, but I don't always think that that's the best platform to go with for business. You know, it wouldn't make sense if you're, let's say, a financial advising firm for you to be on Twitter um, or even Instagram. You might just focus more on Facebook because it's more of like a customer service type of platform. Uh, so I think you have to take into consideration who are you speaking to, what type of business are you promoting, and then from there kind of look at the platform. You would think that the best way to reach the most people possible is to be on every social platform there is, right? But if you're a workforce of one, this may not be the best use of your time. On Instagram, hashtag foodie has been used millions of times. So if you're about to open a hip new cafe, this platform would be a great place to start. It's all about imagery and what better way to attract people than by sharing mouth-watering photos of what they could be eating for brunch. LinkedIn is the world's largest network for professionals. So if you're a freelance marketeer and need to reach new clients, this would be a great place to start. Get noticed by posting informative content that shows just how much you know about that thing that you do. Pick the platform that offers you the biggest opportunity first and grow from there. So yeah, I think it's really important to think about um, can't be everything to everyone. Pick channels that really align to your strategy, to your audience and to the goals that you're trying to achieve. And to give you a concrete example of, um, I guess, uh, one way we've worked with a nonprofit or a nonprofit using Canva to achieve um, a great marketing campaign was the recent Earth Day Live templates that we did in um, partnership with Future Coalition. And they're a youth-led um, climate group. They were organizing a, um, a massive number of um, rallies across the US um, just before COVID hit. And then they had to quickly um, pivot and take these, um, these um, these in-person strikes to virtual strikes. So um, they created a bunch of amazing um, templates on Canva. Um, so some social media imagery, some Zoom backgrounds, some Instagram story templates, um, web banners and Facebook posts. And so, um, yeah, there's some beautiful, um, this is one of the Zoom backgrounds that, um, yeah, I guess Zoom is now a part of our everyday reality. And it's a really, you can, you can go into Canva and customize any Zoom background with the message that you're wanting to get out or that's aligned to your organization so that whenever you speak to anyone, you kind of got this in the background, which is pretty fun. And then um, these are some of the Instagram tiles that we had. So they came up with a great, um, I guess, theme and then carried that throughout all the assets that they created. Um, so moving on to pitching now. Um, I guess a lot of you, some of you may be pitching for funding, but it may also just be sharing stories of success with, um, with your funders or with people who you're trying to get to support your course. So when you log into Canva, we've got a bunch of presentation templates. And so if you just type presentations at the top of the toolbar, we've got over 500 professionally designed presentation templates um, to add your own style to. And um, a lot of these, we, we actually, we don't just create templates, like I said, that are nice to look at. We actually do some really deep research into how to communicate effectively. So we took a good look at um, the Y Combinator seed deck. And I don't know if any of you have heard about Y Combinator, but they they fund startups. Um, they're based in the US and they're a community of over 4,000 founders. And um, their companies have a combined valuation of over $100 billion. So they pick, you can see from the list there, they have a pretty good um, inkling as to who's going to be successful or not. They picked Airbnb, Stripe, uh, Clever, Weebly, and a whole bunch of other really successful startups. 
And um, so we took some deep insights that they had from their research and their learnings into how to make a presentation effective. Um, and they've got re three really um, easy tips to follow, which is make it legible, make it simple, and make it obvious. And I think I've seen so many presentations which are just have all this tiny, tiny font and way too many points on a page. So it might seem like really simple, obvious advice, but it doesn't happen enough. And here's a short video to explain that. The most important thing, and this will sound obvious, but um, clarity. You would be shocked how few pitches are sensible. First, don't think about it like a pitch. I think founders too often think about this like comical, like, hey, now let me tell you about this great idea. That's not, that's not how. That's not what a pitch is. A pitch is really is the most concise way to describe your business and why it should be interesting to you know to the person sitting across the table. It's shocking how many pitches I don't really understand, and they're never the good companies. Um, if you really spent a lot of time in idea, if you really have a, a big new insight uh, and you're really thoughtful about it, it usually only takes a couple of sentences to. So I'll stop there, but I think you get the gist of the idea. It's take the time to really, really simplify down what you're saying. All of you are working on very complex issues um, that you're often so deep in the detail that you forget, um, I guess, how to step back and explain it really simply and clearly to others. So it might not be necessarily that you're pitching for funding, but um, I think that concept of simple is um, better is something to really bear in mind when you're communicating anything via a presentation um, to your audience. So um, uh, Y Combinator doesn't only support um, for-profit uh, startups, it does actually take on not-for-profits as well. And uh, these are four key factors that they bear in mind when selecting their non-profits to fund. So it's the team, um, the big problem and the big solution that they're communicating to them and then provable or promising programs. So have they um, done any test cases? Have they got evidence to kind of back their hypotheses? And then it's looking at the culture and values fit with, um, I guess, what they, what Y Combinator believes makes a team and a business successful. So I think um, even if you might not be in that kind of startup phase, I think just um, making sure that you communicate some of these issues to your audience um, can help them really believe that you know what you're doing and you're onto a good thing. Um, so I think bring the clarity of a pitching mindset to any presentation that you give. But um, as we are in the nonprofit world, um, it is based on relationship building. So you do have to communicate your impact as well as you ask. And here's another short video from um, Layla Jane. She founded Sanasos, which is a nonprofit um, that aims on bringing people out of poverty. And she um, kind of disagrees with the pitching mindset. She sees it more as a um, relationship building exercise. So take any opportunity you get um, of presenting to people to use it as a chance to foster relationships and um, I guess build your army of supporters. solution to global poverty is dignified work. Fundraising is so hard. Uh, I'm actually an introvert, even though I have to give speeches and talk to people all the time, I find it really uh, uncomfortable. So my, my main piece of advice is to think about fundraising and media work and kind of everything you do as relationship building. So ultimately, you're trying to connect with the people who could potentially support your work. You're not trying to sell them or pitch them. You're trying to forge a friendship with them. And if you can see them as potential guides, um, advisors, mentors, friends, the money, I, I think, tends to come most often after that initial connection has been made. And especially when you're not coming from a place of desperation, but a place of calm confidence, you will come across as more genuine and less pitchy. Um, and I think pitching, even though it's so tempting to do that when you're desperate for funding, can have the adverse effect of making someone less likely to support your work. So I think being really prepared, having a great deck, having um, put the time and energy into simplifying your um, your you know, the work that you're doing um, does help you come across in that really calm sense and take any opportunity you get to talk about your work to really leave an impact and help 
um, your audience remember, I guess, what you're doing, the key stories you want them to remember. Um, and part of all of that is storytelling, I think. Um, it's so important to the work that all of you are doing. So what's your vision of a promised land and how can you um, make your stakeholders see the future that you've seen? You've obviously seen something. You're, you're going to work every day because you believe that what you're doing is making a big difference. But how can you really share that and translate your vision stories? Um, so I think visuals are great for doing that. They really invoke motion. Quotes are amazing. Um, I think bringing some hard um, quantitative stats is always a good thing, um, but making it personal. So what's the positive impact that whatever project or organization um, you're working with is having on the cause or people that you're serving? And I think this is a great quote from Melinda Gates. She says, the power of stories open our hearts to a new place, which opens our minds, which leads to action. So as much as you can weave stories into any presentation that you give or pitch that you give, I really do think that's powerful. So we've just talked about a whole bunch of stuff that Canva can help you to do, um, but we do know that there's a lot more we can do to help um, all of you design for change. And um, we've done a bunch of surveys um, in the past few months, and we've heard some of the needs of our nonprofit user community. And um, you guys want more diverse content, you want more not-for-profit customized templates, you'd like more educational resources. So things like, um, I guess, deep dives into some of the topics that we've touched upon today and um, help filling organizational skills gaps, saying we don't know where to start, we're not, um, we're not designers, we don't have marketing specialists. So um, as part of this, in response to this, we're hosting a Design for Change Week um, from the 3rd to 7th of August this year. And this is a week where our team is gonna internally sprint on how we can actually improve our current product, specifically non-profits. So we'll be working on a bunch of, we'll be um, customizing our onboarding experience. So currently, I think a lot of you didn't even know that um, the pro plan was out there for free. So we're gonna start telling people about that in a far more effective way as they sign up. Um, we're gonna have a not-for-profit specific landing page when you log into Canva. Um, and a, you know, a special page externally explaining all of these features so you can share it with all your um, not-for-profit colleagues. Um, we're gonna have not-for-profit specific photos, illustrations, videos, and icons, and um, not-for-profit templates, which um, you'll be able to see in specific categories like impact reports or fundraising pitch decks. We're not gonna get um, all of these done in that week, but um, this is what we're planning to start building out. And then, um, Similar to what we've had today, we're gonna to build out some design school specific not-for-profit learning sessions. And um, to inform some of this work, we would love um, anyone who's interested to participate in some research with Canva. So um, if you're keen to be part of a more in-depth um, research piece and do an hour long interview with um, our um, user research person at Canva, click on this link and there's just a super short form to register your interest and we can, um, yeah, we look forward to drawing insights from our community. So that's it from me today. And uh, hopefully that leaves us time for a little bit of questions, but thank you so much for coming along. It's been great to have you here and hopefully um, you can all go sign up from Canva and explore some of the tools that we have talked through today. Thanks. Thank you so much, Robin. That's wonderful. And you've really provided us with some great uh, demonstrations there today of, of how people can use Canva. Um, and also, <laughs> and also of um, some of the tools. So um, I'm just going to ask a couple of questions that we've got, a uh, couple around the sign up process um, and how not for profits can sign up, and then also a couple around some of the tools available. So uh, the first question we've received is from a couple of people asking, they already have a Canva free account, um, mm -hmm. and is it easy for them to transfer over and apply for Canva Pro for not for profits, and can they take their templates with them if they do so? from their Canva free account? Yes, all yes. oh, good questions. So um, it's really easy, just go to the link on, um, I think it was called, it's canva.support. Um, it's included in the Prezzo, go there, sign up. It's just a simple form that you have to complete. Um, you give, use the email address that you have for your current um, Canva free account. And if you do that, then all your designs will transfer over. So if you use a different one, obviously, it'll create a new account for you.
Sorry, wonderful. Um, I've also received another question about a couple of people have tried to apply for Canva not-for-profit free before um, mm -hmm. and they haven't received a response yet to date. So a couple of months in the waiting. Would you recommend they try signing up again or is there somewhere they can go to to contact um, some uh, mm -hmm. to get more information? Yeah, sorry to hear that. <laughs> um, our systems are definitely not perfect, so um, that's really bad. But um, yes, apply again. And if you continue to have problems, I can give my email address to um, to you, Chloe. And yeah, just let me know. It sh that shouldn't happen. But um, yeah, I'd encourage you just to apply again. Wonderful. I'm Thank you sure. for that. And I'll Thank share through um, those links from today's session, um, as well as uh, your email for anyone who has any queries too. Um, if you ha do have any queries, send them through to events at connectingup.org um, and then mm -hmm. I'll forward those queries on to Robin uh, directly, mm -hmm. re-sign up issues as well if you need uh, from today's session too. Um, I've also uh, had a couple of questions about um, are there any restrictions on the type of not-for-profits? So uh, someone who's an arts organisation uh, tried to apply, but there wasn't an arts option uh, from the drop-down menu in terms of types of charity uh, that they are do you, and, and, and the goals that they have, I guess. Is there mm -hmm. any suggestions you have to help people make that fit or? Uh, so if they, like I said, these are our eligibility, can you see those, the eligibility yes. guidelines? Is that working? Yep. Yes. That is. These are our eligibility guidelines. So if you go and have a look at Australia, it's any charity registered with the ACNC mm -hmm. um, or income tax exempt, not-for-profit orgs as defined by the ATO. So if they fit within those criteria, they can apply. Um, mm -hmm. As I said, we're looking to pretty soon expand to a broader range of social impact organizations so it's um if you have a mission consistent with a you know community or social um benefit then anyone can um qualify for that because i do realize we don't capture the intent is to capture all those organizations right now but we're not currently doing that through our quite objective strict criteria so um yeah we're gonna extend that but um that's a change that will come soon so watch your space okay wonderful and i guess in the meantime from an application point of view if they do fit that criteria but their cause or mission doesn't quite fit should they try to just provide that in the description in the application or um is there any restrictions um, around causes causes or missions the um, drop down list we have, because we sort of mm. um, define the goal you're focusing on. The goals, that's yeah. based on sustainable development goals. So, I mean, just pick one that you broadly fall under. We'll, we'll most likely be changing that too, because I don't always think it's the best way to describe different goals. Um, and there's a lot, you know, some of them are very, very broad. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we're looking to change a few of those things. So, yeah, all this feedback is actually really useful helping us decide um i guess how to reframe that but if you are struggling to just pick the most relevant one i guess right now mm -hmm. wonderful um i've received a couple of queries now around the actual uh, tools as well so the uh, photos that and the images that you have available on your um, website for people to use are there any restrictions around how those images are used um, or you know, featuring people in photos that have been taken from your website in other people's branding or on social media? Is there any IP that needs to be acknowledged or anything like that? No, if they're in there, then they're you know, yours to use as you want to. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, obviously we have different um, agreements that we've entered into with all our contributors. So um, anyone can contribute to the Canva library. You have to go through an application process, which is pretty cool. If you're an amateur photographer wanting to get your work out to millions of people, you can do that. Um, just Google Canva contributors. But um, yeah, we have a bunch of terms and conditions. And good each to kind of agree to those. Wonderful. Um, I had another question around... It's like any... Oh, sorry. Oh, no, you go. <laughs> oh, no worries. Um, I had another question now around, um, uh, Lee asked the question, are there plans uh, 
to have Canva to be able to enable like the text to go circular, like actually to go around in a circle, or does that <laughs> exist currently? So many people want that. Okay. <laughs> it might seem like a weird Everyone, yeah, so that's being worked on. It, you know, uh, hopefully it'll be launched soon. I'm not across all the details of um, the font team, but um, yeah, no, that's definitely, you're not the only person who wants that. It's coming. <laughs> Okay, that's cool. <laughs> your request. That's great. I thought that was a little bit odd at first, but that clearly is not an unusual question. So that's great to know. <laughs> um, just to clarify as well, we have a lot of New Zealand people on our call today too. So uh, is Canva um, not for profit pro available in New Zealand too? It is available in New Zealand. Um, let me scroll down to see what. There we go. Uh, non-profit or non-governmental organisations listed on the Charities Commission register. So like I said, that probably doesn't capture everyone maybe on the call today, but we will be expanding that in the relatively near future. So keep a look out um, and you can register as soon as that's expanded to capture and include you. Wonderful. That's awesome. We're receiving a lot, lot of questions here and unfortunately we are running out of time today. So um, I'm going to take these questions offline and um, if uh, Rob and you're okay to help answer them, we'll get back to everyone as well uh, in our follow-up uh, email today with our webinar recordings and link to the slide. Um, thank you so much everyone for attending today. Robin, is there anything you wanted to finish up with uh, today um, before I do a bit of a wrap up? I was going to say sorry for the change of scenery. I my computer charger in a different um, room, and I, you know, the one thing you would have thought to remember for a massive webinar is your computer charger. So luckily, I didn't. Um, my computer didn't die on all of you. But thank you so much for your time. Um, hopefully, I um, showed you some tools that um, you didn't know about to use in Canva. And please um, reach out with any questions and any feedback because all of this will inform. Um, I guess how we develop this product for all of you going forward and um, like anything at Canva, Mel, our CEO, she's always saying we're 1% of the way there. We really believe there is um, so much impact that we can um, work with you to achieve in um, improving communication and marketing in the non-profit sector. So yeah, we're really keen to welcome all of your ideas. So um, please send them through to Chloe and thanks for your time today. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Robin. You've provided uh, wonderful insights today. And I think it's really exciting to see that Canva is just continuing to develop and, and progress in the tools that you're providing for the NFP sector. So I know that's really valuable to everyone on the call today as well. Um, I hope everyone's learned a lot from the presentation today. And we've, I know we haven't answered everyone's questions, but we will get to that uh, post this session. Um, and for those of you looking for more, more tools in your uh, fundraising and digital marketing kit, please do visit the Connecting Up and uh, TechSoup New Zealand websites and check out Training and Education uh, section because we've got some great webinars coming up as well uh, with a variety of different speakers. In particular, we have an online fundraising webcon uh, on July 15th and that's featuring four amazing speakers from the fundraising sector talking about how you can, I guess, uh, include more virtual fundraising techniques uh, into your overall fundraising toolkit uh, in Australia and New Zealand. So again, thank you all for being with us. Please enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe. Thank you, Robin. I hope we'll see you again soon. And uh, yeah, everyone enjoy the rest of their day. Thank you. Bye-bye.